What's going on, fam? I'm Josh. You can call me an Orion, and this is Soul Blazer, the first of three games known colloquially as the Quintet Trilogy. Now, this game was produced by Enix back in 1992, but it was made by a company called Quintet. And it was, as I said, a part of a trilogy. Now, it's not Soul Blazer, Soul Blazer 2, anything like that. It's three games that, while they're different, they share a lot of the same themes and everything. Most people know the second and also third games. Illusion of Gaia, and then the third game, Terranigma. I've played a little bit of Soul Blazer in my life. I've played a little bit of Illusion of Gaia in my life. I've never beat either one, and I've never played Terranigma. So, I figured... This channel, if I'm doing Let's Play stuff, should be new experiences or things I know very well. Like, you know what I mean? So I kind of want to be like, hey, let's dig into this because I know it's a great trilogy and this is the game I feel like people know the least. And it's the most basic, sure, but I rem what I remember was good. You know what I mean? A voice came from above. My follower. Since you will be able to speak with all living things, you should have a name. Please choose a name for yourself. Remember, kids, you can call yourself whatever the f*** you want, and no one can tell you otherwise. Uh, but my name is, of course, an Orient. It's, it, it's, it's my name. You know, it's, it's my name. It's on the internet, anyways. An Orient. What an interesting name. What the fuck you trying to say? All right, we're not gonna start shit this early. It's fine. All right, go and save the world for all creatures. All of them, every last one. Now, I can't go out either of these ways yet. If you go up here, a voice came from above. How can I help you? This is just where you save. So, like, the game very much so tells you, go left. And here you have a treasure chest. An Orion received Sword of Life. Now here's the thing. You don't have it right away. And that's a mistake I'm not gonna make on camera, but I absolutely made the first time I ever played the game. You need to equip the Sword of Life. And you see, a sword from the master. Strength, sword. Clears everything up. I don't, I don't even understand where confusion could be, but yeah, check me out. Okay, we got this little gabagool over here. He dropped a gold thingy. You dropped a gold thingy. You dropped a gold thingy. Ah, taking damage, boom. Now that didn't react to me actually stabbing it. That is uh, an enemy lair. Wrong button. I'm good at games, y'all. There we go. That is a monster lair. That will be something you'll see repeating as we go through the game, but let me get through this and get to the first real section where it matters. I used to live up in the sky just like you. Now I am living on Earth away from the Master. All the creatures that have been captured by Death Toll are sealed away in monster lairs. Just as you have set me free, you must set free everyone. Even the release of a small tree or creature, they will aid you in your quest. Here, take this. An Orion received the Flame Ball magic. Now I will join you. I am a magician, so I can use all types magic. I will use my skill to help you. That should be all types of magic, but it's fine. Remember this, I need gems in order to use magic. When you set me free, the monsters left some small spheres of gold. This is what a gem looks like. All right, let's work together to revive the world. We must go to the Grass Valley Shrine. And so now you've got that following you around, okay? And it's like he said, you go into the menu and magic, flame ball. It costs four gems and you shoot a fireball in one direction. What does that look like? Looks like that. How much am I gonna use that? I don't know, especially given I just wasted the four gems I had, but you know, better to have it than to not. And now the Southern path is open. First, let's remember to save it. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember to save every time you go to a save point, kids. Do you wish to continue? Yes. I only just started, y'all. Come on. 
so now you have this kind of completely blank area. Right? One thing I think is dope is they they put lines on the screen, right? So that while normally it would be screen tearing, notice they don't work it heavy on the brown. They used the the grid lines to create like a wind blowing the grass effect. It's pretty neat. It was it was it was a creative way of using the resources at the time. No, I can't slash my sword here, by the way. <clears throat> because quite literally, the only place I can go is down here. An Orient heard a small voice. There are many creatures being held in the underground castle. If you can release those creatures, the village will be reconstructed. That's the flower. I, the flower says the same thing. I'm talking to a flower, so off to a good start. Yeah! So, notice here, monster lair remaining 14. In this section of map, there's gonna be a grand total of 14 of those little layers, okay? Now, the thing about it is that I won't necessarily be able to access every monster lair the first time I reach any area. You know, there's, there's levels to stuff, you know what I mean? Um, but that's the total that's in here. The way monster layers work is exactly what you see. They pop out monsters until you kill enough that they're done. And then once they are, they leave that little glowing green dot space. When you interact with it, it changes to that. Each space works differently. Sometimes it just clears the immediate path forward. Sometimes you get an item. Sometimes, however, and these are the important ones, you get, you save people or change the pathways back in the main hub area. So in this case, like the, the little village area where I was. So when I go here, boom. An Orient released an old woman. And so a house forms and there's an old woman from inside. You hear a sigh coming from inside the house. But notice, I can't actually interact with it. It pops you back wherever it is on that map, but you don't actually, li like it's not a, a Mario 64, you have to come in for every individual lair kind of thing. Um, it just gives you an idea of where on the previous map it is, and then it keeps it moving. Something else to note, look at the top, you see I've got level one experience 17, and then gem 18. You get gems by picking them up. You get experience by killing enemies. This game is an action RPG. And as you level up, it increases your health. It increase. oh, that's not the screen I wanted. I wanted, no. There we go. Jesus, I forgot which button it was. It can increase, uh, <coughs> it can increase your strength. It can increase your defense. It's good to level up. Do you necessarily need to grind? No. Norian received medical herb. Very key. So the medical herb is an item. What does it do? Very simply put, if your health reaches zero and you have the medical herb set in your item slot, because here's the thing, it doesn't just automatically, you can't like use it as an item and you can't, it doesn't, it's not passive. You do have to actively choose to set it in your item slot. But if your health reaches zero and you have that item set in the item slot, you restore back your HP. Jesus. I am not doing phenomenal right now. Remember, I, like I said, I have limited playing experience from when I was younger. I remember a bunch of it, but it's not like I played the hell out of this game or anything. You know what I mean? No! Kill the flame! Which sounds more dope than it is. An Orient heard a faint voice coming from the jewel in the corner. All right, come over here. And so you go to the jewel in the corner, and I will give you some advice. Don't forget to equip the things that you wish to use or they will not work. An Orient received XP. How much? 30. Would you like to return to Grass Valley? Stay. Come back whenever you feel like returning Grass Valley. So that's a quick whoop, uh, quick warp home. 
Notice what it said, by the way, Soul of Magician. You can get other souls as the game goes, obviously, for it telling you that. But we got the Magician soul, and that's the one currently following me. Dang it. Trying to be extra careful. There we go. Boom. One thing I will note, it is definitely harder to avoid taking damage just because of movement arcs when you are fighting enemies from above than when you're fighting them from basically anywhere else. I'm not worried about wasting the medicinal herb because one thing I do remember is there is a way to get more, like, eventually you will unlock someone in town who just, like, if you don't have an herb, hands you an herb. It might be the tool shop owner who they just are like, oh, do you have an herb? No, here's an herb. Like, you can't buy anything in the traditional sense. It's not like your gems turn into you being able to buy equipment. But you, they will just straight up give you an herb if you don't have one. Hey, found 12 gems. Okay. Alright. I'm also almost leveled up, which is nice. No, 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 no! Jesus. Trying not- I'm trying not to waste my herb until I need to, however. Just to check, I still have it equipped, right? Yeah. I was just making sure I didn't accidentally go to zero health and, like, not heal like I thought I would, right? It has been a bit. I might be misremembering details. No! See? Yeah. It just- it just used right there. Now, I'll be able to get another one. So it's ultimately fine. Anorian, release Tulip. Norin began to hear a small voice. There once was a water mill here before the village was destroyed. I hear there is a man in the mill who runs the elevator in the underground castle. Okay. You know, everything you need in life. Water mills and elevator men and castles. Okay. Worth noting, these guys have a very specific shooting arc. And if you can get them in the right way, they're actually easier than what we've been facing because they stop to shoot. So, like, by definition, you can work it more. Anorian, release the bridge guard! <coughs> okay. So I release the bridge, but also a guy who's gonna be in my way. This feels somewhat counterintuitive. Damn it! Oh no, my worst enemy, flies and fire. I'm allergic to both of those things. Okay, I'm not doing great, I know, but boom. Shoot me, cool. Level up and I'm back at full health. Norian received Dream Rod. That is an item you use uh, story-wise. That's not an equipment item. I can tell you not. In fact, the way you can check is <coughs> you go to items and boom, Dream Rod is there. It lets you look into people's dreams, so to speak, which really just means like you can end up interacting with people who are asleep. And notice now enemies go down in two hits. If I push here, you see my strength is now two swords. So quite simply, against enemies with one defense or with standard defense, which is anything I'm dealing with at this particular point in the game, I deal two damage per hit instead of one. And it makes life immediately easier. These enemies are very much so not nearly as much of a threat when two slashes kill them as they're moving towards you because generally you can get that second slash in before they reach you. I love the music in this game as well. I feel, I wish I had the cartridge of this as a kid. I'll say that because I played it a bit like via emulation as an adult. I didn't even know about it as a kid. Um, but I played it a bit via emulation, not even as an adult, but older than my current age, I should say, would be a more accurate way of putting it. Okay, important to notice here, they still take one damage. They have extra defense, 
So they will continue to take one damage until I go up to, I think, three swords of attack. Which is, you know, good to know because, like, everything else takes two hits now, but those take four hits. And you have to plan around. Now, again, when you can get them coming from the side, they're still very easy. Use that wide swinging sword arc to your advantage and just abuse it. Boom. What you got for me? Anorian released the water mill keeper. He keeps the water in the mill. A man's voice came from inside the water mill. Darn it, this stupid wheel. It's so hard to turn. Okay. Thanks, bud. Appreciate you. No, you did. All right, go here and I am an elevator invented by Dr. Leo. I cannot move unless the water mill is turning. Boom, and so that's how they get you. And as you try to walk this way, it's kind of hard to do, but you can still walk this way. And boom, and if you notice, you're back at the beginning. It gives you a, a loop. So now, having explored this whole thing, oh, there's still a monster lair remaining. Give me one sec. Let me walk back. Teach. And make sure it's not something I can mess with right now. I don't think that it is. I think it's over here, but I just want to be sure before I write a check that my butt can't cash. Oh yeah. I think it's up in that section, but just in case, let me go over to the, let me do a quick circuit and return. All right, there's nothing here, right? This fireball's McGee, but I'm not really worried about him. Like I said earlier, you don't need to grind in this game. So like, while I could just sit here and pop off those additional fire stacks and things like that, like this one I will, it's directly in my path, but I'm not gonna sit here and like hunt down extra stuff to kill. Unless you're like in a situation where you're like, I think I'm about to fight a boss or something like that or an enemy is chasing you. Um, but if you're like, I am think I'm about to fight a boss and I know I am, you know, three kills away from a level, go ahead and go for it. But by and large, you don't need to like grind. And yeah, that the extra layer must be on the other side of the elevator. So now having done all that for the town, now I can show you, this is essentially the feedback loop of the game. So now I can go, first thing, let's go back. No, wait, it's on the other side, that's right. So first thing, let's talk to the tulip. There once was a water mill here before the village was destroyed. I hear this one, that's right. He actually already told me what he had to say. And I have the short-term memory of a flea. My husband used to be the village chief. One day he suddenly disappeared along with the other villagers. I feel so lonely. How about being one of my children? Yes. Really? I will call you Anorian from now on. Well, that's my name, so that's convenient. Use the second floor as your own room, and boom. The reason you say yes is now you can come here and freely heal in between... Uh, This is the room of the village chief. He used to sit and rock here for hours. I wonder when he is going to come back. So I get that they wanted this to be a rocking chair. But that's not how rocking chairs work, is the thing. Hello, may I help you? Oh, you are the one who released me. Take whatever you need from my store. I only have medical herbs though. Anorian received a medical herb. Boom. And so now, I can, every time I go into the dungeon, I can just make sure to have a medical herb equipped. And feel free to run it down to using it, because I can always get another free one. I am the guard of the bridge. Guess it is not really necessary to guard such a small bridge. Please pass. You know, it's not even like he says, you saved us as my thanks, you can pass through or whatever. Dude's legit just, oh god, that's sad. He legit just sits there and is like, I mean, my job's fucking worthless, so. Bye. Alright, let's go in here. Rotating this wheel will move the elevator in the underground castle. I'm too weak to turn this wheel. Will you do it for me? Wow, you have one job. This is the wheel. Will you try to turn it? Yes, Anorian turned the wheel. As the wheel started to turn, power was transmitted to the underground castle. 
but now the elevator works in the underground castle, and so we can progress further in there. And then you come over here, and it's just a iron armor and 50 gems. And then you talk here. I'm watching over the world. Please take this. Anorian received XP. Specifically, 80 XP. And so now we go to armor, and we equip the iron armor, and <coughs> we take less damage from everything. And that's, like I said, the feedback loop of the game. Go into the dungeon, clear out layers as either until you can't clear them anymore, or until you need to heal. Return, but keep going until you can't clear anymore. Come back, see what changes have been, are makeable or have been made. Continue. Um, that's basically it. But it's a fun little game. It's a fun little feedback loop. The sword swings feel great. And that's kind of all there is to it. But I like it. Uh, and you know, we're going to keep this first episode pretty, pretty modest. I, I do want to be able to show people further into the game. I'm going to try and keep, you know, not have 40 and 50 minute episodes. You know what I mean? As I come back. Those will eventually happen. But I'm gonna try to avoid it. So... Oh, oh, but I will get this last monster lair now. Because I can. And then this whole floor will be cleared out. Boom. And in so doing... Boom. An Orion released an old man. He looks exactly the same as all the other men in this village. I gotta be honest. All right, and with that, we'll go ahead and cut this episode here. Please keep watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment telling me if you're familiar with this game or if you're familiar with any of the other Quintet games. Illusion of Gaia, Terranigma, you know, tell me your thoughts about the trilogy as a whole. And please subscribe to see more. Thank you so very much for watching. I love y'all, I appreciate y'all, I thank y'all. And until next time, I'll catch you later, fam. All right.